Hello everyone. Um, welcome to uh, the fifth lecture of this uh, final week of our course on uh, nonlinear control. Uh, we have been looking at um, sliding mode control uh, in the last uh, sort of couple of sessions. Right um, now. What was sliding mode control? We introduced sliding mode control as a, a particular kind of variable structure control. And we understand that uh, this sort of variable structure implies that the control structure tends to change across the sliding surface. And we have seen an example of that, right? So we've been introducing the whole material on sliding mode control using motivating examples. And the example is pretty straightforward. It is just a double integrator with some uh, nonlinear disturbance. The nonlinear disturbance is assumed to be uniformly bounded for all time and for all values of the state. Uh, and uh, um, what we do to begin with is to construct what is called a sliding surface. Right? So the sliding surface is like a one dimensional for this two dimensional system. Yeah, it's a one dimensional sliding surface and you can see it looks something like a straight line. So essentially uh, uh, what we want to do is we want to um, uh, send sigma to zero, the sliding variable sigma uh, to zero in the presence of uh, disturbance. Right. So this quantity is the sliding variable. So that's what we want to do. We want to send this quantity to um, zero, right? Um, as uh, in some finite time, right? That's the aim in some finite time. So it's actually a kind of finite time control. So you, we use some finite time ideas as well. So uh, since we want to do that, we construct a Lyapunov function, which is exactly in terms of the sliding variable itself. Notice that this is not in terms of the entire states of the system. So um, it's rather interesting that way. Right. So it's actually uh, something uh, only in the sliding variable, right? It's almost like saying that I'm looking at the dynamics uh, of the system on a on the straight line, right? And we want to basically we want to make sure that the dynamics of the system goes to this straight line in finite time. Right? And what we want to do is we want to make we want to make sure something like this happens because we remember that this exactly gives us finite time convergence. So we simply compute a V dot just we are like we are used to doing and uh, then of course we know that uh, we use the signum function property right? we use the signum function ideas um, we prescribe a, a V um, which is something like this right? which is uh, something similar to this. So basically we first subs we first prescribe a U which cancels out this guy right and then we are left with another knob V. And we choose that knob V uh, in a way so as to compensate for this uh, nonlinear disturbance by choosing this uh, gain rho to be larger than L. Right? So once we do that, we get something like V dot is less than or equal to minus V to the power half. And therefore, we have our finite time convergence. Right? So our entire control looks like this. Right? Now, the important thing to note is that uh, that's, what, that's where we were last time. That's where we finished last time is that the control across the sliding surface is a rather big switch right? depending on how big my uh, if you notice uh, <clears throat> on the sliding surface you have x2 plus cx1 that is equal to sigma yeah? and that's exactly equal to zero right uh, and on one side of it uh, you have the control to be minus cx2 minus rho and on the other side of it you have the control to be minus cx2 plus rho. So depending on the size of this row, notice that this x2 may not change too much if you just move across the sliding surface, right? The, the states are not going to change much because I mean, it's not like you're going to move too much in the phase plane. But the point is depending on how big we chose the value of rho, there is a significant discontinuity in the control. Right? There's a jump in the control. 
and and um, this is what obviously leads to this non smooth control idea of course right uh, so what happens is because we are not exactly cancelling the disturbance at every instant in time right we are not exactly cancelling it simply dominating it what happens is that the even after the system reaches the uh, sliding surface right so this is called the uh, you know this is called the reaching phase while it's reaching the su sliding surface and then you have the sliding phase when it actually moves on the sliding surface right so what happens because of this disturbance and the fact that we don't exactly uh, uh, compensate for it is that you uh, tend to oscillate around it at very high frequency why because as soon as you go to one side you implement a big control to compensate then you uh, again go to the other side big control to compensate go back to the other side big control to compensate and so on and so forth and in fact even the control plots uh, start to look like this right where you have large uh, chattering kind of control right we have large fast changing control right so uh, however the aim was to send the sigma to zero in finite time and that's achieved right so the sliding um, the sliding variable goes to zero in finite time and this is what is called uh, and and uh, of course this is, this is called first order sliding mode why because the sliding surface that we chose was a uh, um, first order system in fact okay? so uh, for the second order system it reduces the dimension okay? the system starts to evolve technically in the absence of disturbance it starts to evolve on a one dimensional surface so you reduce the order of the system by one beyond a certain finite time regime okay so this is called a first order sliding mode and um, on top of it this is also called um, an ideal sliding mode since the reaching phase is finite time yeah that is why this is a called an ideal sliding mode so that's what we were discussing last time as to how to alleviate this issue of chattering right so that's what we want to do next next so the question is how to alleviate the chattering so one of the methods we discuss obviously one method right now huh? there are multiple but it has got to do with some kind of a higher order version of things in some sense right so what is it uh, answer is add an integrator yeah so the system was something like this x1 dot is x2 x2 dot is um, u plus f x1 x2 t and now we say we do not directly apply the control u but we apply we supply to the system the derivative of the control okay so and we have some x10 equal to x10 x20 is x subscript 20 and the u we now that the u variable has been made into a state we just choose its initial condition as zero okay that's in our hands right so that's what we do that's what we do. so we start working with this higher order system okay we start working with this higher order system and then what do we say we say that now i am going to um, uh, now construct new sliding surface okay and what is it we call this variable s and it's sigma dot plus c bar sigma hmm? right so sigma dot plus c bar sigma and remember that sigma was x2 plus c x1 okay and now we say that so you notice that now our new sliding surface has been constructed using sigma itself no longer using x1 and x2 but directly using sigma yeah and you still see that this will now start to contain 
the derivatives and the disturbance itself right right the sigma dot will contain the disturbance yeah so that's the interesting thing now the sliding surface itself starts to contain the disturbance terms so um so what happens now if we say that uh, s goes to 0 in finite time what do we have we know sigma sigma dot go to 0 asymptotically just like before right? before we put that if sigma goes to 0 in finite time we have x1 dot and x1 that is x2 and x1 go to 0 asymptotically and that's what we'll have so we just prove that sigma sigma dot goes to 0 asymptotically right which means that um, the earlier sliding variable is no longer uh, going to converge in finite time right so this is so we are in fact working with an auxiliary sliding variable s right but this sigma now goes to 0 only in asymptotically not in finite time right like before so we have weakened the requirements right we have weakened the requirement we are no longer requiring that sigma go to 0 in finite time hmm? right now how does that help me okay how does that help me sort of uh, get rid of the attenue uh, get rid of the chattering hmm? okay let's so let's construct the dynamics of course so let's see what s dot is s dot is sigma double dot plus c bar sigma dot right and uh, this is let's say um, I have to take derivatives now right so this is x2 double dot plus c x1 dot so I'm going to do this carefully plus c bar sigma dot which is x2 dot plus c x1 dot and this turns out to be x2 uh, so first i write the c bar x2 dot which is u plus f uh, i'm not going to write the rest of the things plus c x2 yeah notice that i have not written the arguments here but i hope that's evident that it's a function of x1 x2 and t and now this quantity will be x2 double dot which is u dot v plus f dot is the derivative of this guy right because we have prescribed the dynamics of u now so u dot is v and f dot is just written as it is right um, so that is x2 double dot and what is c x1 double dot so c x1 double dot is just c x2 dot right okay this is just c x2 dot all right so what is c x2 dot this is simply uh, c multiplied by u plus f okay so i've just carefully written the derivatives here yeah, and i've not done anything more so this is uh, exactly this guy right okay right right okay great so then i have this as v plus f dot plus cu plus i will say c plus c bar times u plus c plus c bar times f plus c c bar x2 right and that accounts for all the terms now if i want uh, s to go to zero in finite time what would i do i would take v as one half s square just like before and compute v dot as s times s dot which is s times this whole thing right so i'm going to write this remember now uh, well I'm just going to write it like this as it is v plus f dot plus c plus c bar f plus u plus c c bar 
x2 okay remember now that uh, u is no longer the control yeah we cannot prescribe uh, u anymore we can only prescribe v and that's what we want to do okay now what are the terms we can we know and we can sort of compensate for here immediately is c plus c bar u yeah because now it's a state so it's known so i can compensate for it and this is also well known so i can compensate for it the only issues are f dot and f now at this stage we make another assumption right because we already have an assumption on f on the uniform boundedness of f so we make a similar assumption on the uniform boundedness of f dot right that so obviously this is true for all x1 x2 t okay? that's what we do right and we start off by uh, choosing so we choose v the control now v as minus c plus c bar u minus c c bar x2 okay and what else we now take um, something like a uh, plus a rho signum s yeah this is not very different from before yeah we are doing something rather similar here okay right and what does this leave us let's see if this works we can we may come back and change these terms a little bit if this doesn't exactly work but let's see what happens so v dot now becomes s times um everything else goes away like a few terms cancel right this cancels with uh, this uh, this cancels with this right so i'm left with only the ff dot terms right so i will get rho signum s plus f dot plus uh, c plus c bar f right so this actually evaluates to again s and signum s multiply to give me absolute value of s so this is exactly equal to rho absolute value of s plus s multiplied by f dot plus c plus c bar f now if i do the norm bounds i know that this is going to be less than equal to rho absolute value of s so actually I'm, i apologize this should be minus rho right this is what i knew that there we will need to do some change this is minus so there will be minus again minus rho sig rho absolute value of s plus absolute value of s multiplied by l bar which is the bound on f dot plus c plus c bar l which is the bound on f right l bar is the bound on f dot right so this is coming from here using the bound on f dot and this is coming from here using the bound on f right and now it's pretty easy right it's pretty straightforward i do what i've been doing until now i will choose rho to be say equal to um, l bar plus c plus c bar times l right and uh, i will add a factor now right which is basically say something like a uh, plus a 1 over root 2 right so this will give me v dot as exactly less than equal to minus 1 over root 2 absolute value of s which is actually equal to minus v to the power half right and then i'm done right i get my finite time convergence of s right this implies s goes to zero in finite time right and therefore we have what we um, went uh, what we wanted to achieve right we will have what we wanted to achieve now this is essentially called uh, since 
the actual sliding mode is sigma actual sliding variable is sigma since sigma goes to 0 asymptotically this is called asymptotic sliding mode and not the ideal sliding mode okay not the ideal sliding mode okay so um, what is our control now our uh, control that goes into the system is something like minus well i mean the control is already written here so i don't need to repeat it let me just uh, highlight it for you yeah let's just highlight it here and that's what is the control okay? that's what is the control that goes into the system but notice that uh, v is not directly implemented but the integral of v from 0 to t which is equal to u is implemented right well actually i should not say uh, but solution of we should say solution of u dot equal to v with initial condition being zero is implemented okay and that's a good thing right first of all notice that u dot equal to v is a stable system because i have u dot uh, this is equal to minus c plus c bar u minus c c bar x2 minus rho signum s so you see that this is a nice stable term something nice is happening and on the other hand an integral effect happens right so when we do an integral action earlier the control itself had a signum right in the previous case if you see the control had a signum function in this case the control has no signum function right the derivative of the control has a signum function all right so you what you have it's still not infinitely smooth or something like that actually you can't expect it because you have employed some kind of finite time convergence for some variable whether it be at one derivative level or second derivative level and so on uh, if you notice this uh, finite time convergence is sort of implemented on a second derivative level right so but still because you implemented finite time convergence you will not have like smooth controllers but the good thing is the non-smoothness is pushed to uh, one derivative below right so the control is actually an integral of the signum function right and therefore uh, what tends to happen is that you will have uh, you know much cleaner sort of control right i mean um, it is something that you can verify by simulations right but you will have much cleaner control right control so u has integral of signum function hence no high frequency chattering okay and this is rather nice and this is rather nice I mean, it's not that it is uh, still uh, free of um, oscillations. It will still be oscillations. Um, depends on how fast your signum function is moving. So even if you integrate the signum, you will still have oscillations, but it will be significantly reduced. Yeah, it will be significantly reduced. So this is uh, one way of um, sort of alleviating or attenuating this chattering. Okay. And uh, uh, so this is sort of nice. Yeah, this is sort of nice. Uh, so... Um, so this is um, something that may be acceptable in a lot of circumstances uh, for an actual application as well yeah right now um, one of the concepts that um, we uh, let, well in sliding mode control one of the concepts that folks are interested in is the uh, notion of uh, disturbance estimation okay is the notion of a disturbance estimation right and uh, therefore um, we um, sort of are looking at 
um, the, the for disturbance estimation there is the need to um, have a notion of equivalent control okay so that's what we will introduce now a little bit is the notion of equivalent control right so what is equivalent control right what is equivalent control um, this is sort of the control as computed on the sliding surface okay so this is the control as computed on the sliding surface so what is this so notice that when we started we had the sliding first surface which was x2 plus sigma x1 right and uh, what we had obviously was it because of finite time convergence we had sigma equal to sigma dot equal to zero for all t greater than or equal to some tr right some tr right uh, which is the finite time convergence time right so if you look at uh, sigma dot and you compute sigma dot that is x2 dot plus sigma x1 uh, x2 dot uh, is x2 dot plus sigma x1 dot and x2 dot was just u plus f x1 x2 t plus sigma x2 and if we say that this is exactly equal to zero and it is on the sliding surface then what you compute out of this the control is u equivalent which is actually minus sigma x2 minus f x1 x2 t okay so this is what is called the equivalent control now the interesting thing to notice is uh, this is not the actual control hmm? yeah this is not the actual control what was the actual control you can go back you can go back and actually get this back here right so that's the actual control yeah why cannot this be the actual control simply because it has this unknown quantity right which is act never being applied right which is never being applied yeah so um so that's the idea that um even though you um don't apply this control right even though you're not actually applying this control you do um sort of um get the effect of applying this control in a sort of um, averaged way yeah in a time average sense this is exactly what you have okay uh, so what does this uh, sort of mean yeah what does this sort of mean would be a good question and how does it help us right so that's sort of the question that we uh, we that we sort of ask ourselves right so so um, so that's sort of what we ask ourselves but before that the important thing to to sort of note here is this is the equivalent control this is not the actual control like i already said but this is precisely the equivalent control right and how can we use it right how do we use it so the idea and we are not again stating this by carefully proving these things and so on and so forth but the idea is that um, we can estimate the u equivalent as 
a low pass filter of the actual control so this is just minus cx2 minus rho uh, multiplied by a low pass filter of signum sigma okay so this is essentially just an acronym for a low pass filter i mean ideally or typically how would one implement such a filter it would be something like uh, introducing a state tau z dot equals uh, minus z plus uh, signum of sigma and your equivalent control is simply minus c x2 minus rho times this new variable z okay so what are we claiming that there is this control um, that we can compute from the sort of steady state if you may when you're on the sliding when you're sliding right so notice in spite of disturbance we are exactly sliding yeah? so sigma becomes exactly equal to zero so the idea is uh, since sigma becomes exactly equal to zero uh, and in steady state or in fact after finite time so i mean the steady state happens at finite time we have an equivalent control which is different from the actual control but can be obtained from the actual control by means of a filtering like a low pass filter and this is sort of expected because if that was not the case then there is no way you would have been able to sort of cancel the disturbance and stay on the sliding surface right and therefore there is enough logic uh, here to understand that this idea of low pass filtering to get to the equivalent control actually works yeah and you can see this is a way of estimating the um, value of the disturbance and that is what we will do yeah so this is actually a way of differentiator uh, differentiating terms as well and um, this is also a way of identifying this nonlinear disturbances in finite time all right that's what we look at in the subsequent lecture thanks <laughs>